the changing needs of customers and new innovations in the market are part of the business environment. The challenge of businesses in this technological era is not to enter the market, but to survive in the market. To survive in the market means to adapt the changes as fast as possible. To adapt the changes means to be aware of the business environment and to be able to fit in into this fast-paced era. We have to improve the business process to satisfy both internal and external customers. Improving process means to use a set of techniques and tools and improvement methodologies. In today's video, we are going to talk about process improvement, techniques, and goals of process improvement. We are also going to tackle or talk about the overview of Six Sigma, its characteristics, objectives, and its methodologies. Process improvement starts with thinking big and starting small. So what is process improvement? Process improvement involves business practice of identifying, analyzing, and improving existing business processes to optimize performance, meet best practice standards, or simply improve quality and the user experience for customers and end users. Process improvement can have several different names such as business process management or BPM, business process improvement or BPI, business process re-engineering, continual improvement process or CIP. Regardless of the nomenclature, they are all pursue the same goal, which is to minimize error, to reduce waste, improve productivity, and streamline efficiency. When we say waste, waste in terms of process improvement is anything that does not add value to the existing process. We should avoid waste not only to reduce cost, but also to increase the long-term performance of a process. There are seven types of waste that we should avoid in improving business process. First is transportation, second is inventory, third is motion, the fourth one is waiting, fifth is overproduction, sixth is overprocessing, and the last one is defects. This can be easily memorized by familiarizing its acronym, which is TIMWOOD. The goals of process improvement are the following. First, understanding existing process. Second is introduce process changes to improve quality, reduce cost, or accelerate schedules. Third is industry is demanding increased attention to quality in general. Fourth is most process improvement work focuses on defects reduction and prevention. And finally, there are other process attributes that deserves our attention. Which is first is understandability, which means degree to which a process is well defined and understood. Second is visibility. A process activities have results that are externally recognizable. And the third one is supportability, which means a process activities supported by case tools. And the fourth one is acceptability. A defined process are used and accepted by software engineers. And the next one is reliability, which means process is defined so that errors are avoided or trapped before product errors result. The sixth is robustness, which means a process can continue despite unexpected problems. The next one is maintainability. A process can involve to reflect changing organizational requirements or identified process improvement. And finally, rapidity. It is the time required to complete a system for a specific to or specification to delivery. Now let's talk about process improvement techniques. There are several different methodologies designed to help the organization tackle process improvement. Each aims to help the business identify process issues, fix them, and analyze the success or failure of those changes. Despite that common goal, each methodology suits a different need. Some framework focus on lean process improvement techniques, others focus on getting your company culture in the right place for process improvement, 
There are also methodologies that help companies visually map out process workflows, such as Kaizen, Nexus 5S, Nexus PDCA, or the Do, Check, and Act. Now, the next one is Six Sigma, Cause and Effect Analysis, SIPOC or SIPOC Analysis, Value Stream Mapping or VSM. The next one is Total Quality Management or TQM. And the next is Kanban. And finally, we have Process Mapping. Now let's move to introduction or overview of Six Sigma. What is Six Sigma? Six Sigma is a set of techniques and tools for process improvement. It was introduced by American engineer Bill Smith while working at Motorola in 1986. Six Sigma seeks to improve the, the quality process outputs by identifying and removing the cause of defects. It can also be defined as a collection of managerial and statistical concepts and techniques that focuses on reducing variation in the processes and preventing deficiencies in the product. When we say reducing variation, this means um, improve customer satisfaction, reduce operating costs, and increase profitability. Now let's talk about the characteristics of Six Sigma. 1. Statistical quality control. 2. Methodical approach. 3. Fact and data-based approach. 4. Project and objective-based focus. 5. The customer focus. 6. Teamwork approach to quality management. 6 Sigma has several objectives for business. First is overall business improvement. Second is remedy defects or variability. Third is reduced cost. Fourth is improve cycle time. And finally, increase customer satisfaction. When we say overall business improvement, this means Six Sigma methodology focuses on business improvement beyond reducing the number of defects present in any given number of products, while remedy defects variability means any business seeking improved numbers must reduce the number of defective products or services it produces. As we all know, defective products can harm customer satisfaction level. And for reduced cost, a company implementing Six Sigma principles has to look to reduce cost wherever it possibly can without reducing quality. Reducing cost means increasing profits. The next objective of Six Sigma is to improve cycle time. This means any reduction in the amount of time it takes to produce a product or perform service means money saved, both in maintenance cost and personal wages. Additionally, customer satisfaction improves when both retailers and end users receive products sooner than expected. And finally, increase customer satisfaction. This means customer satisfaction de depends upon successful resolution of all Six Sigma's other objectives. Levels of Six Sigma This table will show the definition of the level of Six Sigma and its corresponding accuracy and DPMO or defect per million opportunities. Good companies have 97.7% accuracy and 22,700 defects per million opportunities. Level 6 Sigma has 99.9997% accuracy and 3.4 defects per million opportunities. This means companies should aim for Level 5 or Level 6 Sigma to accurately meet the process improvement objectives. Sigma is a measure of process variability. This means the higher the Sigma level, the fewer defects the process creates. Six Sigma has two major methodologies. First one is DMAIC, and the second one is DMADV. DMAIC or DMAIC is a structured problem solving procedure widely used in quality and process improvement. It is often associated with Six Sigma's activities, and almost all implementation of Six Sigma's use the DMAIC process for project management and completion. DMAIC is used for projects aimed at improving an existing business process. 
while DMADV is used when client or customers requires a product improvement, adjustment, or the creation of an entirely new product or service. The application of these methods is aimed at creating a high quality product, keeping in mind customer requirements at every stage of the game. Now let's talk about the first major methodologies of Six Sigma, which is the MIC or DMAIC. DMAIC has five phases. First, define. Second is measure. Third is analyze. Fourth is improve. And finally, we have control. In this first step, project goals and both internal and external customer deliverables are defined. This piece focuses on the selection of high-impact projects as well as the understanding of which metrics will reflect the project's success. Who are the customers and what are their requirements regarding services and products? What are their expectations? Project boundaries are defined, including starting and stopping points. The process flow is mapped out. Key activities in the defined phase are the following. First, develop the project charter. Second is map the current process. Third is gather the voice of the customer or VOC. And the fourth is form the project team. Measure. Here the current process is documented, its forms of measurement validated, and baseline performance is assessed. The key tools in this phase may include process capability measurement, basic Pareto charts, trend charts, process flow chart, and gauge r and &R. Key activities in the measure phase are the following. First, identify the measurements to collect. Second, develop and execute the measurements collection plan. Third, develop and validate the measurement system. And fourth, identify baseline performance measurements, DPMO, or defect per million opportunities and sigma level. Analyze. This phase focuses on isolating the top causes behind the critical to quality characteristics or CTQ or the metric that is being examined. These steps identify any gaps between current performance and goal performance, prioritize improvement opportunities, and identifies any sources of variation. Tools used may include hypothesis testing, time series plots, histogram, scatter diagram, the Pareto chart, fishbone diagram, and multivariate analysis. Key activities in the analyze phase are the following. First, stratify data to identify underlying problem or problems. Second, identify root causes. Third, validate root causes. The fourth phase of the mic is improve. Improve or optimize the current process based upon data analysis using techniques such as design of experiments, pokayoki or mistake proofing, and standard work to create a new future state process. Set up pilot runs to establish process capabilities. The tools that is commonly used in this phase may include hypothesis testing, analysis of variance or ANOVA, design of experiments or DOE, and regression analysis. Key activities in the improved phase may include the following. First, identify potential solutions. Second, evaluate and select potential solutions. The final phase of the MIC or DMAIC is control. All improvement needs to be controlled in order to ensure lasting results and sustain changes. Control the future state process to ensure that any deviations from target are corrected before they result in defects. Key points in control phase may include the following. First, potential or pilot potential solutions if needed. Evaluate pilot results if applicable. Develop the control plan. Develop the change implementation plan. Develop procedures, standards, and training materials. The next is deliver training. Next is communicate improvement. And finally, implement improvements. Now let's move to the second major uh, methodologist of Six Sigma, which is DMADV. The same with DMAIC, DMADV has also five, five phases. 
first is defined, second measure, third is analyzed, fourth is designed, and finally we have verified. The first phase of DMADV is defined. The goals of the first phase are to first identify the purpose of the project, process, or service. Second is to identify the set realistic and measurable goals as seen from the perspective of the organization and stakeholders. Next is to create the schedule and guidelines for the review. And finally, we have to identify and assess potential risk. Next comes measuring the factors that are critical to qualities or CTQ. Steps taken should include defining requirements and market segments, identifying the critical design parameters, designing scorecards that will evaluate the design components more important to the quality, reassessing risk, and assessing the production process capability and product capability. The third phase of DMADV is analyze. Actions taken during this phase will include developing design alternatives, identifying the optimal combination of requirements to achieve value within constraints, developing conceptual designs, evaluating then selecting the best components, and then finally developing the best possible design. Next to analyze is design. This stage of DMADV includes both a detailed and high-level design for the selected alternative. The elements of the design are prioritized and from there, high-level design is developed. In the final phase of DMADV, which is verified, the team validates if the design is acceptable to all stakeholders. Will the design be effective in the real world? Several pilot and production runs will be necessary to ensure that the design is the highest possible. Here, expectation will be confirmed, deployment will be expanded, and all lessons learned will be documented. So just a quick recap, DMAIC and DMADV are two Six Sigma's methodology that share a few common traits, but this cannot be used simultaneously on the same project or interchange because they are designed for use in different facets of organizational process. DMAIC and DMADV are similar in that they are both used to First, reduce the number of defect to less than 3.4 defect per million opportunities. Second is to define quality-related solutions to problem using data and statistical tools. And the third one is to help achieve an organization's financial and business objectives. DMAIC and DMADV are different in that DMAIC is used to improve existing process while the DV is used when creating a new process. Thank you so much for watching. This is Phil, now signing off. Have a good day.